If you followed through the first two movies of this series and made changes to the characters, simply reopen the file you downloaded for the tutorial. Hide the LODs and the two characters on the right. We'll be using only the main character for this part. In the last movie, we discussed how an art director can have a change of heart by changing the design of a character. In that example, you had to change the waist and shoulders of a character to give it a more cartoonish look. This was achieved by selecting sub-objects and scaling them in or out. Although the volumes changed, the topology and edge flow didn't. In this situation, the art director wants to add a gun belt to the character, the character being a soldier or a rebel of some sort. This means that making the gun belt part of the character will require not only modeling it, but cleaning up the resulting model. The existing character's edge flow will be seriously compromised by the addition of a gun belt that goes diagonally from the waist to the shoulder. Instead, you can keep the gun belt as a separate prop. However, you'd still need to skin it properly so that it travels flawlessly with the rest of the character's body. This is where skin wrap comes in, again. First things first, let's model the belt. You need to model it in a way that conforms to the body. Make sure the character's mesh is selected and go to the Modify panel. Highlight Editable Poly and expand the Modeling ribbon. Go to the Freeform tab. You'll use the Strips tool to build the belt. Instead of building the belt on the construction grid, choose Surface and then pick the character's body as the surface you want to conform to. If you wish, enter a small offset value, such as 0.1 or 0.2, so that the ribbon is very slightly over the body. Expand the Poly Draw panel. Set the minimum distance to about 40. This in effect defines the size of the strips that will make the belt. Click on New Object to ensure the belt is a separate prop and not an element of the existing mesh. Click the Strips tool and then click and drag over the character's chest to build part of the belt, from the left shoulder to the opposite side of the waist. orbit around, and then hold shift and click and drag to continue the strip to the side, and then up the back. Keep on going, using the same orbit shift click and drag technique to close in on where you started. When you get close, choose Step Build, and drag from the last strip edge to the first, and this closes the loop. If you want, Use the Shift tool icon, not the keyboard key, to reposition vertices. At this point, the belt is very much an independent editable poly and can be edited as such. Add a shell modifier to it to give it depth. Set the outer amount to about 0.3. Convert it again to an editable poly. Have a little fun with it. Try creating some detail for shell casings, for example. If you were to manually skin this gun belt to the biped skeleton, you're in for some trouble. Try it. With the gun belt selected, add a skin modifier. Add all the biped components, starting with the pelvis, as skin bones.
Select the biped's head and exit figure mode. Test the animation and notice the many skin problems you're encountering. Adjusting the weights at this time, you would have had to spend a good deal of time on it. With skin wrap, it's kids play. Set the biped in figure mode again to go back to the initial pose. Remove the skin modifier from the belt and replace it with a skin wrap modifier. Using face deformation with a 0.001 falloff, choose the full body character as a control object. Set the biped out of figure mode again and test the animation one more time. It is practically flawless. Set the biped in figure mode again and select the belt. If there are any adjustments to be made, you can always convert skin wrap to a regular skin like you learned in the two previous movies. Notice, however, that the belt is using all of the biped's bones for skinning information, but that's only because it's a direct transfer from the character's skin data. If you want, you can access Edit Envelope mode and remove those bones that are not affecting the belt. This will make calculation times easier as fewer bones are processed. You have to be careful though not to remove a needed envelope as undoing is not possible. As you select envelopes in the list, keep an eye in the viewport for color codes. If the belt stays a uniform dull gray, then that envelope does not affect it and can be safely removed. When you highlight an envelope and a part of the belt turns blue, yellow or red, that means this envelope is needed and should be left alone. Some should be pretty straightforward. Spine envelopes logically affect the belt because of their proximity and should be left alone. Fingers, toes, hands or feet, on the other hand, are far away and can be safely removed without second thought. In this particular case, you should be left in the end with only about 8 to 10 bones affecting the belt. Remember to be very careful as removing an envelope cannot be undone. To demonstrate, choose Edit Hold to bookmark your progress. Remove an envelope that you know is needed such as BIP001 Spine 2. Press Ctrl Z to undo. Even though the envelope is back, the skinning information is gone and cannot be retrieved. Choose Edit Fetch to recall your bookmark. Test the animation one final time. In this three-part series, you learn how to use skin wrap in a variety of ways to transfer skinning data from one object to another. We hope you enjoyed this set and found the techniques useful.